Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 113 where you send your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. First one is called Question Regarding Kinetic Energy Weapons. Hi, Mark. Energy weapons are apparently being used in the population in the past several months, caught by many cell phones. What effect do you think it'll have on an enclosed system? Has the color of the sky changed in these areas as we've seen, or could the dome itself be reflecting light back in a different color due to kinetic energy changes? And that's from Hauo, H-A-U-O. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the energy weapons is, is fascinating. I, I love the, the high tech stuff, whether it's Project Blue Beam or the wildfires in California. And again, what, what I enjoy more than anything is that uh, science reality is often different than science fiction in that uh, if you look at the pulse beam weapons, they're absolutely silent. The beams are very, very quick. I mean, blink of an eye, you, you would miss them. They're, they're infinitely faster than anything we've ever seen, uh, not just Star Trek, but Star Wars. And uh, yeah, it's it's really, really interesting. I Do I know what effect it has on an enclosed system? No. Uh, I think the thing that has the most effect on an enclosed system would be the com internal combustion engines because those things are you know just mini furnaces and there's billions of them running at all times. But thank you for that. This one is called Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Mark, hope 2019 is a great one for you and yours. Cheers, Dan and Yuli. Oh, that's awfully nice. That's from Dan Faso up in Oak Harbor, Washington. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and thank you for all your support. This one is called New Argument Against the Spinning Ball. Dear Mark, here is a beautiful new argument against the spinning ball. And there's a wiki entry to uh, the Round the World Ticket. The Round the World Ticket, also known as Round the World Fair, is a product that enables travelers to fly around the world for a relatively low price. Prices vary, but generally range from 2500 to 6000 American dollars for an economy class ticket. Round the World Tickets are priced... According to travel class, origin of travel, number of continents, mileage, and sometimes season of travel, but are never ever priced in accordance in accordance with the direction of travel, is if, as claimed by heliocentrist Luciferian Freemasons, the Earth and its lower atmosphere were really spinning from west to east at a thousand miles an hour at the equator, then the round the world ticket would be in fact considerably cheaper, perhaps twenty five to thirty five percent cheaper for travel west to east than in the opposite direction because of the free loading effect of the airplanes in question, effectively cashing in on the alleged eastward round i'm sorry spin of the earth but in the real world of competitive fuel pricing such a suggestion would only be apt to draw frowns or even grins from the cost accountants because in the real world no airline in history has ever priced a round the world ticket to depend on the direction of travel here we have yet more proof that the spitting ball earth model literally flies in the face pun intended of direct observation experimental evidence and common sense my dear friend Mark, and he wrote this in like 24 point font, by simply delivering plain and logical arguments, we are going to knock down their house of junk science brick by evil brick. Please feel free to reuse this powerful argument if you have not done so already. This may accuse us of being spooks or shills engaged in psyops, but I got this idea this afternoon here in Bern, Switzerland, just by divine inspiration. So thanks be to God. And that's from Patrick O'Carroll. Thank you, Patrick. That's awesome. This one is called Flat Death Model. Hello, I'm Sergeant 23. I, I saw your YouTube video on the Flat Earth model. How can I purchase one? Great models, by the way. And that's sent from Jay. Uh, well, Jay, you can try your luck at flatearthmodels.com. That is done by Chris Pontius. He makes some wonderful things. They are not cheap. Uh, and other than that, just do what a lot of people do. And that is just type, or, type in flat earth model into Google and then click on whatever, I think for sale or shopping or whatever browser you're using and see who's, who's out there selling stuff. Uh, the only guy I know that, that's selling consistent models because they have not been mass produced by any Chinese company yet is Chris Pontius from FlatEarthModels.com. So thank you for that. This one's called a thank you 
and best wishes for 2019. Hi, Mark. Love your shows and clues. You're a brave man. Thanks. Keep it flat. Peter and family. Thank you. It was a good holiday, and 2018 was a banner year for Flat Earth, and I cannot wait to see what happens in 2019. It's going to be really, really cool. This one's called Man Crosses Antarctica. Mark, hi, my name is Mark also. I live in Marysville. Well, that's in Washington, by the way. Used to live on Whidbey Island as well. Anyway, I just heard some guy named Colin O'Brady supposedly cross the Antarctic continent on foot in 90-some days, dragging a sled with 400 pounds of gear on it. Sounds like a story to me, and by that I, he means a fishtail. What do you think? Sincerely, Mark from Marysville. Yeah, that that particular story, and I'm sure there's a few other people that are going to send me that as as well, uh, is just a load of trash, load of rubbish. It's it's terrible, and of course the fact that it made front page on so many news feeds lets us know, and this is not delusional, that these headlines are coming out just for us. That and just about every space story that comes out every, it's not even just every week, it's multiple times a week. What's the latest one? Oh yeah, Chinese landed a probe on the dark side of the moon. That makes total sense. Uh, more stuff happening on Mars, more things with Virgin Galactic, more things with SpaceX. Uh, although I have to note, and I've gonna, I gotta do the trailer for that today, um, because uh, somebody said sent me before the, the holiday break that they were going to do a meetup outside of a theater where Neil deGrasse Tyson was going to be making a presentation that was doing down in Orlando, Florida. It was going to be the back part of January. And I made the, the promo and he goes, oh, no, we're, we're, we're doing it the day earlier now because Neil deGrasse Tyson isn't coming. And the reason he isn't he isn't showing up this presentation is because the sexual harassment suits have forced him or coerced him or whatever to pull quite a few of his dates, if not all of them. I don't know if he's doing public appearances right now until he gets this thing settled because he doesn't want to deal with the media and or people just asking him general questions so interesting interesting stuff so thank oh i'm sorry that was from uh mark from marysville so thank you mark this one's called the alien song to my fellow flat earthers on youtube hi mark i made a goofy video with three of my kids i was wondering if you could send it to all the big flat earth youtubes patricia steer rob skiba nathan roberts robbie davidson jaronism odd etc etc it is meant for all of you only you guys would get it thanks Teresa. Uh, and that's from Teresa Leskinen, and her YouTube video is called, let's punch it up here real quick. It is called The Alien Song, oh, literally, To My Fellow Flat Earthers, and I gave it a thumbs up. So thank you for that. And uh, so, cool. Moving on. This one is called SW169 Long Overdue cur Curvature Math Correction. And when I say SW, they, I mean Strange World. I, I don't put Strange World in the title of the YouTube videos. I just call it SW and then a number. So is talking about Strange World 169. Hey, Mark, I'd like to respond again to your Strange World 169 conversation of about one hour and 14 minutes. Yes, I realize, as you said, we, we don't see any curvature, so it really doesn't matter. However, shouldn't we be right, accurate, and not copying the extremely lazy ballers? Eight inches per mile squared is actually quite off and quite generous to the ballers. In fact, eight inches would only ever be any kind of correct if the ball Earth were just 16,000 miles in circumference. Which is exactly what the ballers, NASA, and flatties all unknowingly profess it to be. The real truth and only accurate figure for a proclaimed 25,000 mile around Earth is 10 and 1 8 inches per mile squared. And yes, it's completely accurate for the entire quadrant as it must be. I've always laughed at it and been very ashamed of the curvature calculators, but no one wants to correct anything. Yes, I can both explain and very simply demonstrate it. No, it's not complicated math or any refiguring after so many miles. The way I finally corrected it was barely even math, although I can give what laughable correct math there is to even show how inaccurate and non-math the math garbage is. You should say math a few more times in that paragraph. Feel free to write back or call me at 610-707-3556, and that's from Iggy. P.S. I can instantly bury and make a complete mockery of error 
Eratosthenes in a heartbeat. I don't know why no one else hasn't long ago. And again, uh, you're not going to be changing it. It's we've, we've gone too long now with eight inches per mile squared. So it's not going to change to 10 and one eighth inches per mile squared. Thank you for that. Uh, but again, remember it, the eight inches per mile squared works just fine all the way up until I think like 500 miles or so easy to remember. And it's already been burned into everybody. So unless other people agree and think that we should change to 10 and 1 8 inches per mile squared, or why not even just 10 inches per mile squared? In fact, you got to ask yourself, and I appreciate that you've, you've done the extra legwork on this, why you're coming up with 10 when everybody else says 8. So let me know and just send me a follow-up email on that. So thank you to Iggy for that email. This one's called Food for Thought. Good day, Mr. Sergeant. Just thought you might want to see the below pics on the coast of Dubai. I really like how the barrier around the planet, as it looks very similar to other flat earth pics. Not sure if you know about this, but the below is called the World Islands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the World Islands, which is done, uh, you know, Dubai, they made a bunch of private islands for the super rich. And they're, all these islands are done in the shape of a, a Mercator map, mostly. It's, it's, it's rough, but it's, it's, yeah, it's mostly a Mercator map, but it's, it's got a, a circular barrier around it, and it's kind of cool. So, oh, I'm sorry, that was sent to me by Cedric Ernston. Thank you, Cedric. This one's called John Travolta, a pilot. Mark, I know John Travolta is a pilot and owns a few big planes. Question is, how much would we have to pay him to do a North Pole, South Pole circumnavigation? To disprove the globe, of course, we could call up the National Geographic and have them fund the test. Thoughts on this? Have a good one. Oh, yeah, there is an article of the big boom on Whidbey Island. You know from the Whisper Alpha and Omega cough cough and that's good and that's from nathan and uh two things one john travolta is not going to be doing anything uh controversial he's trying to wrap up his career with a nice bow on it and remember he made a comeback he, he's been a, a star ever since he was a kid and he's he's done very very well so i don't think he's going to risk it and second national geographic it is not on our side and you could tell that by the piece they released uh, just a few weeks ago, which was, it, it was a hit piece. It could have been worse, I suppose. Uh, but they were definitely doing the, the call out to science to try to come after us. Let's move on. This one's called, hi, Mark. Can I please have empty shelves and the empty shelf survival guide? Thanks a bunch. And that's from David. Uh, yeah, anyone wants a free survival guide that I wrote after Katrina because Katrina ticked me off so much that nobody prepped after they were forced to evacuate the city uh, that I wrote a 100-page survival guide called it Empty Shelves, and it's absolutely free. You can ask me and I'll shoot you the PDF. It's only about two megs, and I can just send it through email, and I'd be happy to do it. This one's called San Diego, California at sea level to Mammoth Lake, California. Hello, Mark. I hope you and your family are well. Please let me know if this is helpful in any way. I am unable to articulate this in a scientific way, but if someone can, I was hoping scenarios like this across Earth may further assist in disproving curvature. The curvature tests that I have seen have dealt with how far we can see across landscapes or bodies of water, and then plugging the numbers into the curvature calculator and showing that we shouldn't be able to see as far as we can because of the curvature hiding the line of sight. These tests led me to start thinking about major elevation changes in areas on Earth and looking at the numbers of distances from which we cannot see. I grew up in Arizona and went up north on I-17 quite a bit to Flagstaff, and it is a substantial upward climb the whole way. I wanted an even more drastic example, though, so I googled the highest city in California and pulled up Mammoth Lake. Mammoth Lake sits at 7,800 feet above sea level. From San Diego to Mammoth Lake, as the crow flies, is 355 miles. On the curvature calculator for the eye height, I plugged in 6 feet, figuring a man standing on a beach in San Diego. For the target distance, I plugged in 355 miles to Mammoth Lake. Between the two cities, there is a whopping 7794-foot uh, elevation change. The calculator shows there should be 15.61 miles of hidden height. So what I have trouble with is getting my head around exactly what this means. If you have to climb or descend 70, we'll just round it up to 7,800 feet in 355 miles, is it possible to have 15.61 miles of, of hidden height along the 355 mile trek? What 
would that mean water would have to run uphill in places? No. Uh, are there other anomalies with this example that may be helpful? Or am I looking at this all wrong? No, no, you're, you're looking at it right. You just haven't gotten your head around it yet. I cannot help but think there are even way more profound elevation change exa examples across Earth. The journey started for me about six months ago, and the way it came to me seemed somewhat divine. I feel compelled to do whatever I can to try to think outside the box and expose deception and bring forth the truth. Please let me know your thoughts if you have time. Thank you, sir. That's from Mitch. Uh, no, Mitch, you're, you're thinking absolutely fine. Although you, you're, you're getting the distances in the math, that's that's fine. But you really should start looking over, thinking about looking at distances across water because remember, water is is totally level. And if you have, if you can look, at, well, you're not going to be able to see 355 miles across at the beach level because the atmosphere is just too thick. But look at objects that are 50 miles to 70 miles to 100 miles across the water, and or watch videos along those lines because we have a ton of them out there, and see what you think. Look at look at the water stuff first. Then again, love where your head's at. Uh, you're you're not quite there yet though. So thank you. This one's called Flat Earth License Plates. Greetings to you, Mark. I am Pascal. Thank you for what you do. I have recently acquired a flat earth vanity plate. I would like to know if you are accepting new plates from like-minded motorists internationally to showcase on your channel. In addition, I am creating a page on my website dedicated to promoting geocentric truth and would like to link your approved materials to share. Look forward to hearing from you. Happy New Year and uh, B-H-U-L-O-K-A. Uh, Hulaka? That's from Pascal. Oh, he's in the Republic of Haiti, which was interesting because the, the plate that he sent me was from New Mexico and it said flat geo. He used the seven letters to, to spell out flat and then geo, which was very clever. I, we hadn't had a, a one of, we had a, a plate in New Mexico, but not anything along those lines. And I thought it was really, really cool. So, uh, yeah, if you guys have a flat earth license plate and I, I would love to, to put it on and showcase it on one of my videos in or multiple videos on my YouTube channel. And of course, if anyone wants to use anything for my channel, for anything in, in your channel, feel free. Uh, most of my stuff is Creative Commons license anyway. Uh, happy to help in any, any way that I can. Next one is called Elephant in the Room. Please feel free to read out. A very good evening, Mark. Hope you're having a nice drink for the new year, buddy. Most people know the saying, the elephant in the room or hidden in plain view. They live, the matrix, etc. Well, I'm watching an animated film called Sausage Party. Maybe you've seen it. It's from 2016. Seth Rogen. Now then, yes, it's downright rude, crude, and laboratory like Ed's yeah, bathroom humor all over the place. But oh my goodness, talk about in your face truth, even down to the glass dome cover. I would urge everyone over 18 to watch it, even though some, <coughs> excuse me, may be offended by the language. Please just read between the swearing and vulgarity. Maybe this is why they made it so rude. It's not their fault if we were too offended by the content to watch it all. They have upheld their contract to put the truth out there for the public to see. Just got to the part where the sausage Frank was trying to do a conference type speech to the supermarket food, all the sleep, let's say. I must say I really laughed out loud as it reminded me of you when you first started talking about Flat Club. I think Frank was you mark and absolutely no offense meant buddy you see what i mean anyway please let me know if you've seen the flick i'm gonna have to watch it again anyone watching this they may be totally asleep won't see the messages they'll just laugh or switch it off just wanted to share this in your face info with everyone and maybe even start everyone's new year off with a giggle or three maybe even wake a few people up a little into actually doing some research peace love and prosperous 2019 to all that's from bob jellyman in england stay flat buddy Yep, I have seen Sausage Party, and yeah, if you can get past the crude humor, uh, in fact, maybe you should just watch it with the sound off, uh, you see a lot of symbolism there. I thought it was very, very cool. And of course, it was made after the Flat Earth was starting to take off, so that was fun. This one is called Flat Earth. Mark, I saw your videos on YouTube, and I am honestly moved. I want to know more. I want to get deeper into it. I want to experience it. How do I do that? What was the name of the treaty signed between the 50 nations? It's called the Antarctic Treaty. 
Not real hard to remember. Why would they lie to us? You know why. Uh, why are the people denying it over and over? That's because of conditioning. Why don't they open up about it? Well, men don't like to relinquish power. That's probably the easiest one. Uh, power rarely gives it up. Once you have it, it's the most addictive thing ever. Better than cigarettes or drugs. Which, uh, cigarettes are drugs, aren't they? Anyway, moving on. Oh, I'm sorry. That was from Raven. And I wrote it back and sent him a few links to some things. This one's called Mark. Would you like to attend? Oh yeah, right, right, right. Wondering what your next year looks like in terms of scheduling. The group I founded, uh, Flat Earth Bay Area, is looking to have its first meeting. Would like you to attend, uh, and he would like to send money. I, yeah, it's great. If you guys want to fly me out to, uh, you know, just cover my plane and hotel, and I'll show up to your meetup. Uh, and yes, cover the cost of air and lodging. Uh, look at the group and the meetup if you'd like to join. I plan on getting more active in the next year. Thanks for all you do, Mark. Uh, take care. And that's from Owen. And yeah, he's already sent the money. And I will be going down to the Flat Earth Bay area for a meetup. And I don't know when. It's probably either going to be at the end of this month or beginning of next month. I'm hoping. We'll see. Cross my fingers. But thank you for that. This one's called Hiding God. Uh, hi, Mark. I am enjoying your videos immensely. Funny how you have ads about space travel and astronauts on them. Yeah, I don't choose the ads, obviously. I found this whole subject fascinating as the whole idea of living on a ball has bothered me from childhood. And I remember seeing a very old flat earth map about 30 years ago, which struck me at the time. I did make the mistake of immediately going to some friends and talking about it. And it's amazing how open-minded people become almost aggressive in their opinions. My experience in life has been that when something is met with such aggression and dismissal it's normally too close to the bone as we say and i always see it as a beacon of a path i should explore i guess it's like when you're guilty of something you get all defensive of course i am a newbie to this idea i've been conscious of its existence for a few years i guess but have only recently made time to check it out and watch a bundle i'm sorry a bunch of youtube clips but something else tweaked my interest which was talk of the firmament i study kabbalah which was also met with frowns and silent smirks by open-minded friends, but actually it has helped me a great deal in dealing with day-to-day -day life. It is an ancient system for life in which we live in two worlds, the upper worlds where your soul and higher self resides, and Malkut, M-A-L-C-H-U-T, with is the material, you should, I'm not going to give them too much, crap for the spell check. Uh, material world we live in. I've been studying a Kabbalah for about three years now, and it's extremely complex and simple at the same time, but there's a lot to learn. I remembered a section about the firmament, and when I asked a teacher about it, he referred me to another teacher whom he said has more knowledge in this area. I'll let you know how I get on. I am a filmmaker, and this subject has inspired me a great deal. I wrote and directed this short film a few years ago called Welcome to the Machine, which I have pasted a link below in a way of returning some viewing material. You will see the logo I designed for the Gaia Corporation, which is based on the ball globe as a prison divided into its continents. I think I will have trouble getting funding for such a project, but I do have some ideas on how to get around this as i was also massively inspired by capricorn one and looking at the flatter subject i am without doubt going to make that a massive component of the story going forward anyway i'm not sure why i mailed i just felt compelled to say hi and thank you for the exhaustive research you put into this video series and i'm sure continually i wish you all the best for 2019 that's from james thank you james this one's called Advice Regarding FE. Hi, Mark. First, I wanted to let you know I love your videos on, on YouTube. My YouTube is filled with flat earth videos and other related topics from like-minded people as yourself. I am a wife and a mother of a toddler. I am a Christian, a wife, and a... He's, she did this twice. And a mother of a toddler, but none of my family knows about my obsession on this topic. My husband is a diehard space guy, and I guess I'm used to be really into that stuff too until I came across the Flat Earth about a year ago. He lives and breathes any of the movies, video games, news releases, anything related to space and cosmology. Even though I am his wife, I feel he laughs and denies all of this, as many do in the beginning. So... I want to be sensitive in presenting it to him. I would like some advice on which particular video would be a great one to watch for a first timer. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
uh, assuming that someone has never even heard of flat earth before i would need to be biblically sound and preferably not use the term flat earth in the video but maybe imply such something that would be so intriguing and sound so believable that it would cause him to want to dig deeper i knew you would have some suggestions on this and i look forward to hearing back from you also i am new to prepping but i feel led to do it by the holy spirit even though my husband isn't on board with it he thinks it's ridiculous and unnecessary but i believe that we are living in in the SHTF times or very soon we live in a small suburban home so I know that I could do I know I could do to prep what I could do to prep would be very limited any suggestions on this as well okay first off for anyone that's brand new to flat earth if you want to try to convert somebody I would send them the the documentary which is behind the clues uh, behind the clues wow behind the curve i would i would send that to him uh, you can check it out at behind the curve film.com i don't make a dime off of it some people in la do uh, i signed my rights away along with everybody else uh second thing i would do is send them the flat earth clues and then i have a, a third thing which would be the flat earth short list for new people if you're coming from a biblical side of thing i would still do behind the curve first and then i would follow it up with rob skiba's web website which is called testingtheglobe.com it's excellent and then again if you want the prep guide and i sent that to her um the guide is called empty shelves it's absolutely free and all you have to do is send me an email and say i want empty shelves or i want prep guide or i want survival guide or whatever i'll get it I'll just email it to you. So that's cool. Anyway, that's from Kristen. Thank you for that, Kristen. This one is called Houston. We have a problem. Hello, Mark. I've been watching your Clues series with great interest, but upon watching Clues number five, it suddenly dawned on me that there remains a problem to be addressed if one wishes to embrace the flatter theory. Personally, I'm a Christian, so I'm already committed to the belief in a geocentric model versus the heliocentrism of Copernicus. However, many Christians don't even realize that geocentrism and flatter theory are indelibly linked. You can't have one without the other. While scripture describes Earth as only a circle, hence flat, no fewer than a half dozen times, two crucial events in the book of Revelation, second coming of Christ and New Jerusalem, necessitate a flat Earth scenario. But if we are to believe the sun, moon, and stars are held within the firmament of an immovable Earth, as the Bible states, then how does one explain the transits of both Venus and Mercury passing between Earth and the sun every hundred years or so? Are they even planets, roving stars? No, they're nothing. I'm racking my brain trying to work out this problem. Any suggestions? best regards eric l o'connell and uh, yeah you're just hung up on the on what's happening on the sky which is interesting because people will only hang themselves up on certain parts like in this case venus and, and mercury transiting the sun that's that's your biggest hang up i would think there'd be things like oh no the blood moon or the waxing and waning crescents of the moon or meteors or how the stars go clockwise versus counterclockwise uh, there's all sorts of things that, could, that should be able to hang you up in the sky or at least give you pause. But this one, if you've gotten so far that, that you got to Venus and Mercury, uh, no, they're not planets. They're just lights in the sky. That's it. There's no, there's nothing more to it. But uh, again, you know, you'll, if he, if he's this far, he'll, 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 he'll make it there eventually. He'll, he'll give up space sooner or later. This one's called... <clears throat> Earth's rotation in photographs. Hi, hey Mark. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I have fun and civil debates with a friend who is a big NASA fan. I brought up the idea of full photos of the Earth from far away. And why aren't they blurry? You would think that something spinning thousands of miles an hour would be at least a bit blurry when photographing, right? His counter argument was how planes don't seem to move fast because of their distance and our perception. To me, it's different, though. The Earth would be stationary and spinning, not moving against a vast background and direction. Curious to get your place, uh, get your take please thanks dom and no dom look if, if it takes 24 hours for a spherical object to rotate once that's really 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 slow now granted the object is really large and it technically is spinning at a thousand miles an hour um but if you are far enough away to see the entire world it would be moving very 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 slowly so yeah the perspective argument is right and of course I still don't believe in the, in the globe at all, and it, everything's been faked, but that's why, no, there would be no blurring effect. Even with old school cameras, it, there would be no blurring effect. But, but nice, good that you're thinking that way. Again, I, I get it, you know, the velocity, a thousand miles an hour should be really fast, tough to see. Well, yeah, if you're on the ground, uh, but, but the photographs supposedly were not taken on the ground. 
This one's called Happy New Year. Hey, Mark just saw this commercial while watching TV. With all the space reinforcement, I thought it was a NASA commercial, not taking, not a talking book program for the visually impaired. Uh, keep it flat. Hope you have a great new year. And that's from Bill Duke. And the YouTube video in question is National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped Magical Moments. And I'm going to have to check that out after we are done. So thank you for that, Bill Duke. This one's called Vacuum Question. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I've been studying the NASA spacesuit and how it would function in a space vacuum. A listing of 10 to the negative 17th power in TOR, that's T-O-R-R, -R, that's power of a vacuum, by the way, seems to be the space vacuum consensus, but I am using 10 to the 7th power to keep all those zeros manageable, and I can't believe my math is correct. Can you check me? Given one atmosphere inside the spacesuit and a 10 to the 7th outside, I come up with almost 200,000... Uh, PSI pressure. No, I think you're a little wrong there. Pushing from the inside out of the suit. A hand-stitched suit of multi-layer material is holding back 200,000 PSI of pressure. In reverse, our submarines only have 1,060 PSI as a crush pressure. Yeah, you're, you're wrong on the spacesuit. Um, but it's still a huge amount of pressure and, and no fabric, no soft container can withstand a vacuum. It would go tight as a drum and then burst. Period. It's all a look at anything put in a vacuum and, and look what happens to it. And and got to remember the vacuum simulators, the cheap ones that we do down here on the ground would be nothing compared to a pure vacuum. I've got experts that have told me that you when you get up to in that last couple percentage of a vacuum, it's way, way more difficult to pull anything off. In fact, there is they, they have told me uh, several times there is not enough horsepower on the ground down here to create a 100% vacuum. You can get to 99%. And then the last 1% you have to create, you have to do it but with, through a chemical leaching process. You can't even do it with just brute force, which I think is fascinating. Uh, let's see, one atmosphere inside. Okay, so then there's the valves and seals taking this pressure, which today we don't have the technology to manufacture. So to extrapolate out to the 17th power, we get to, yeah. So, and that's from Martin. Thank you, Martin. I get what you're saying. No, your math is off, but it doesn't make any difference because it, seriously, compare uh, anything, put anything in a vacuum. Uh, pressure needs a container, period. Uh, a can of hairspray, a can of spray paint. Uh, any, anything you can think of that, that contains pressure, a hard shell, it puts stress on and a soft shell, it expands until it turns into a hard shell. If you have any doubt, look at what weather balloons are. Weather balloons have a lot of slack a lot of slack when they're first launched. They are just so loose, barely barely anything in there at all. And yet when they get up to about 120,000 feet, they're as tight as a drum and they burst. So tell me what happens to a spacesuit. And then of course, you gotta remember, there's a guy supposedly in there. There's a guy supposedly surviving in there, in the spacesuit. Tell me how that works. Doesn't. And if you have any doubt, uh, look up, um, uh, my flat earth clue is called the lost nail where I address the space in this one's called happy new year hi bro happy new year from the UK keep it flat and that's from Adam thank you Adam for that this one's called Mandela effect otherwise known as Mandela effect or Mandelta effect Hi, Mark. My name is Landis Long. I've been listening to your flatter stuff and everyone I talk to never heard of this stuff and barely, li barely listened to me. But I firmly believe in both Flat Earth and the Mandela Effect. My dad is a, has a tattoo of a lion laying with a lamb from the Bible, but it has been changed to a wolf with a lamb. I would like to talk with you about this stuff and learn what you might think of Mandela Effect. Please call me at phone number. I usually screen calls, so if you text before you call, uh, for sure I'll, I'll for sure answer or call twice. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, no, I believe in the Mandela effect. I do. I absolutely do. I, I th yeah, I've seen too many weird things in computers over the years to know to to, to ignore something like uh, the Mandela effect. The strange stuff happens, especially when you're overlaying. Um, uh, when you're doing like you're saving documents, even when you're saving documents like a Word document, if you save it again and again and again and again, and you just use the same Word document for different projects, eventually these go this ghosting stuff will happen, and weird stuff, weird text will show up from old documents. And you guys, anyone that that spent a lot of time in computers, you will you old school guys, you you've seen this before. So does the Mandela effect happen? Yes, I, I do believe it does. The problem is is that we do not have the ability to read a person's memory and commit it to a screen like has been done in several science fiction movies. 
uh, you know, everything from um, Brainstorm to um, oh, I I don't even want to get into it. You know what I'm talking about. There's different science fiction movies that, that talk about recording memories. Oh, just about everything in Black Mirror, the, the Black Mirror series from the UK. So <clears throat> the the problem, since we don't have that ability, it's tough to objectively rate people's experiences with the, the Mandela. I'm sorry, I'm doing it already. Because um, uh, I keep wanting to say the Mandelta effect now. Uh, the Mandela effect is that we look you're just relying on a person's word for it if they remember a thing a certain way well I, who, who am i to question unless i can see in their mind so it's very very tough to prove or even compare it just comes down to this person's opinion versus this person's opinion or this person's memory versus this person's memory tough to do so i like it but it's not nearly as fun as the flat earth let's put it that way this one's called ISS Lunar Transit question. Leo Mark, first off, I want to say Happy New Year. Over the past month, I've been doing a great deal of research on my own. I began with the moon landing. And as we all know, once it is called into question, many other questions are raised. I have recently converted to Earth agnostic. Ooh, I like that. I am only sure that I am unsure and I have many questions. I have seen a lot of videos documenting NASA ISS bloopers and there is just too much there to ignore. I am now questioning the existence of the ISS. I ran into a bit of a problem, though. It seems as though many independent photograph photographers, well, I was going to say photographers, have been able to capture what appears to be the ISS passing in front of the moon and sun. If the ISS is not actually in space, what is the mainstream flat Earth explanation of this event? Thanks in advance, Frank. Uh, there's something up there. What, what is it? Is it done by the United States military? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Is it a special spy plane with holographic technology? Is a U-2 spy plane? Is, so is there something flying up there? Yes, of course. Tons of photographers have photographed something. Are there people living on it? No, they are not. And if you have any doubt, just look at every, just type in ISS Flat Earth. I mean, normally I'd say like ISS Flat Earth Hairspray, or just look at some of the videos by Mike Helmick. I mean, we've dissected the production value that's happening on the interior of the ISS. ISS is terrible. The CGI green screen glitches that they have on a routine basis are, are embarrassing. Uh, not to mention the, the um, logistical issues that they never seem to address. Like, I don't know, why do you have hair at all? Look, you're, you're talking about a highly filtered uh, atmosphere. You, it would treat it no different than a swimming pool. Everybody's hair would be cut super, super short at all times. You would never allow long hair. Ever, ever, ever. Because once your hair breaks off, it's just flying around in zero G and you'd be running into it on a regular basis. And yet women for the longest time up until very, very recently uh, had long hair. No, no problems. Never in a hair net. And never, nobody even wore hats most of the time. You, your hair was, should be pulled back at all times. The place should be gross. It should be the, the filter should be choked with hair at all times, if if you allowed that. And that's just one aspect of it. One. Uh, the second one would be water, which is they they just throw water around like it's nothing. It's like you've got electronics on the wall at all times, breaker panels everywhere, and you're throwing water like you don't care. A single droplet of water could short anything out. Ugh. I don't want to get into it. But anyway, sorry about that, Frank. I was going off on a tangent there. This one's called the Bible. G'day, Mark. I'd like to know what Bible you use. I'm 54. When I grew up, uh, the Bible had God taking a rib from Adam to create Eve's. The Bibles I have seen recently, more or less, say man and women were made in God's image. No rib. So it makes out a woman is equally the same as a man so does your bible have the rib regards carrie uh yeah mine's i one i've got lying around here i've opened in a while is a king james and pretty sure it's got the rib pretty sure just a king james bible i was uh, again raised born again christian evangelical fell away for a while and then got back into the whole spirituality thing the second flat earth hit my life this one's called earth from space Hey, Mark, been listening to your podcast for a while now. It's become one of my main go-tos for media when I'm cleaning or at the gym. Still on the fence about the whole flat earth thing. Stumbled across a documentary called Earth from Space. Very compelling stuff. I wonder if you've ever heard it or seen it and what your thoughts would be on how something like this might be produced without the information sources stated satellites that measure atmospheric vapor global temperature changes ice formation continental shifts etc if you respond to this please let me know which episode it is like i said love the show and the content even though i'm not totally a flat earth uh, 
uh, yet. Cheers, brother. And that's from Steve. Uh, no, I have not watched the documentary called Earth from Space, uh, nor do I think it's very compelling. And I try to avoid uh, most of the space stuff nowadays because it's just space reinforcement. I focus on flat Earth 24-7. That's what I do. So, uh, but thank you for mentioning it to me. Uh, if somebody else wants to take a look at it and tell me what a load of trash it is, by all means, let me know. Uh, but you're not going to get me to go back to the globe. There is, there is no documentary out there because we've, that'll, that'll do it. There's just not enough stuff. Uh, put me in a space suit. Give me a, give me a space suit. Put me in a vacuum chamber. Tell me how it works. Tell me how I don't die. That's my, that's my earth test. But thank you for that. This one's called happy new year. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hello and happy new year. I was listening to the show and thought, I know I will come up with a new year's jingle to sing to everyone. Needless to say, it took more time than I anticipated to come up with the lyrics and to sing it good enough after battling a head cold. So here's the recording. I think you'll appreciate the last line, especially use this as you wish or not. Sorry, no pro equipment instruments or fancy stuff. Just acapella on voice recorder on my old iPhone and that's from William and yes I will put that in my things to do and I will listen to your new year's song this one's called want to know more hello Mark I watch your video on YouTube and I am left wanting more I'm teetering on the fence when it comes to the flatter theory I was hoping that you might be able to answer a few questions I have I'm on a journey for the truth and hopefully your insight will help me lead help to lead me in the right direction thank you very much and that's from Matt Gray the problem with that is he didn't actually ask me any questions so if you're going to send me an email and say, will you answer my questions? You might as well just put them in there. Uh, Cause then I have to go through two emails. It's going to take too long. So now he's got to send me another email. Hopefully you listen to this one and know that I, you know, when I'm like answering these on audio, rarely will I write back at the same time. This one's called hello from Tulsa. Hi, Mark. Happy new year. I started my flower journey in late 2015, early 2016 by stumbling onto allegedly Dave. Uh, just the meat video uh, by accident. We all have our personal stories about Flat Earth and the responses we get. I was so excited about Flat Earth when I found out about it because so many things clicked and made sense. I wasn't, however, ready for the negative backlash I would get from the people just broaching the topic. I've been a professional in broadcast radio for over 40 years now, much of that AM talk radio, and early last year, Edward Hendry granted me an interview. I was wondering if you would do the same if your schedule permits. Just a little about me. I'm a 57-year-old white male born and raised in Oklahoma, bachelor's degree in marketing and business administration, divorce, no kids. I am a not a globe person trying to set you up for an ambush. I'm truly seeking and hoping to get others to just consider uh, and take a chance, maybe entice others to do a little research on their part. If they choose to start a journey, thank you for what you are doing and be blessed sincerely, Joe Riddle. And yes, I did write him back and say, yep, if anyone wants to interview me or you want me to be interviewed by a particular group, let them know on my behalf. I am not going to solicit anybody. Uh, again, everything has come to me unsolicited, which is uh, pretty amazing. And I'm just going to keep on doing that. Uh, and hopefully we'll just continue down the road of good things. This one's called Refraction and Distance Observation. Mark, I figured out how we can see further than we're supposed to. It's a simple matter of density, as there are so many globe believers about they are bending the light because they are so dense. Ha ha ha. It's funny. That's from Rob McKenzie, staying ahead of the curve. Thank you for that, Rob. This one's called Meteors and Asteroids. Mark was the Bolide meteor that hit a town area in Russia a couple years ago, one that was intentionally sent by an aircraft, or did they let loose from the dome area of our enclosure? They do not come in from outer space. And what about the ones meteorite hunters find in the in the fields around the world? Were they let go at the time of the firmament? Thanks. Uh, that's from Thomas. No, I have no idea. Uh, all I know is we, uh, considering the meteors and, and things that supposedly hit the earth, and, and by the way, the moon, interesting, because it was apparent, all the meteors that are asteroids or whatever it is that hit the moon apparently hit them all at 90 degree angles because they're all circular craters. Remember, meteors should be coming in at just about any angle you can think of at various speeds, so there should be skids. You know, there should be uh, craters that are, look like a, like a plane landing, you know, crash landing and, and taking some time to drag along the ground. 
Uh, and when it comes to Earth, we, you know, all these cameras right now, find me some, some YouTube footage, some, find me some phone footage of a meteor hitting something. I don't care if it's the water, I don't care if it's sand or ice or whatever. We just seem to see only craters. We never see these things landing. Oh yeah, there's some great footage of, of shooting stars. Find me something that, la you know, that landed recently, that, that somebody actually was within visual distance of it. It's, it's interesting to me that we never ever see that. The closest we ever got was that Russia thing, and it still never hit the ground. It detonated before it hit the ground. Anyway. This one's called, I think I can explain the stars in the dome. Hi, Mark. I refill my used two liter plastic bottles with water. Well, one day I filled one about a third full. It fell sideways. I left it for a few days. When I came back to do to it, I found something looking at the bottle. It was water droplets at the top of the water bottle, shimmering dots with rainbow colors inside the water drops at the top of the container, just like stars. <clears throat> Excuse me. I see now that when water evaporates inside a container, the water condensation makes a starlight environment and the water that was at the bottom of the bottle was very misty and damp all inside the bottle. I think the earth is the same way. The world is mostly water. So when the sun makes water evaporates, the, s the water mist and water particles go up into the air. So if we could touch the stars, as we call them, I bet you dollars to donuts, those stars are water droplets on a dome. Lastly, I was taught at school ages ago when clouds are full with water and toxins, we get rain because the clouds dump the water inside the clouds back on earth, meaning water must be above us and that water must not have an escape above those clouds because it just comes back down to us. Anyway, I'm Jason. I'm 34 years old, a high school graduate with no big letters behind my name. Uh, it's odd this theory came from a two liter water bottle, so go figure. You can read this to the masses if you wish. Hope they can think about this like I did. Cool, man. Thank you. This one is called, so craft is sent to explore and it's not really happening. Mark, these scientists, they show a part of monitoring and building the craft. Do not know that nothing leaves our enclosed flat earth. Seriously, trying to get truthful understanding. Also, Carl Sagan, 70s or 80s, and his TV series. He did not or did know about our enclosed flat plane earth. I have no idea. Uh, series again, these images I have are artificial projections also, right? And that's from Tom, and he sent me some images. And yes, everything in the sky is part of a projection system. This one is called Flat Earth Terminology, Sun Cycle, and Moon Cycle. Hi, Mark. How about this? Instead of the old outdated terms of sunrise and sunset, we can use sun cycle in and sun cycle out. Same with the moon, moon cycle in and moon cycle out. After all, these luminaries are indeed cycling above the flat earth and as they each cycle along their paths, they cycle into view and out of view. Or for short, we could say sun cycle I for interview or interview and sun cycles, I'm sorry, I and one and zero out of view are, I got it. Same for the moon. All right. Just saying the new thought for this new year, take care. And that's from Lynn Carl. Yeah. It's not bad. I like it. This one's called the year of our Lord 1019. Okay to read it on air. Mark, I'm an avid listener of your shows. You do great work. I'm wondering if you will do a show on mud floods. Uh, Tartiara and the idea that we may be in the year 1019. There are several different ways to support the idea of being a house a thousand years behind. Example, take the year 35, close to the time of, but after the crucifixion, the Greek speaking peoples would add to the letter, would add the letter I to the beginning of the numerical year. The I indicates the first letter of the name of Jesus as written in Greek. If I could easily be mistaken for a one and getting this wrong would add a thousand years to whatever date you're trying to read and the Latin speaking peoples used an X, which we know means 10 in Roman numerals. 
So they may have put an X in front of the year, which already started numerically with an X, 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 V equals 35. But what then, when we find something dated in the year 135, 135 equals C, X, 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 V, but you may see X, C, X, 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 V. We are taught to think that the first X denoted the number of centuries before the year date times 10 centuries. Uh-huh, that I believe is incorrect. It would be the year of our Lord, 135. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I've heard that before. This one's called Antarctic uh, Drilling and ISS Dialing. F Mark, futurism articles on a Glasgow expedition uh, to Antarctica as a way of beta testing a Mars mission drill. And interstellar butt dialing called emergency services from space. The Glasgow project may provide a clue on how long before they can no longer hide the enclosure and the ISS Feel good story of the day. Not terribly surprised. That's from Shauna. This one's called How to Spread the Truth. Mm. <laughs> called me Mike. That's all right. It's the most common thing. If anyone's going to call me another name, it's usually Mike. Uh, Mike, thank you for taking some time to read all these videos. I found them to be just exactly what I needed to hear. Coming from someone who was previously on the fence over this whole thing, I am now convinced I'm a conspiracy theorist, but really all that means to me is someone who questions everything and is capable of thinking for themselves. That said, I've got all kinds of interesting information that may be of use to you someday if you ever decide to make videos on other topics. I won't say much more via email, although I don't think it matters which method I choose to communicate as they are all mentioned, I'm sorry, monitored in some way, but I used to hold some clearances. I've been to some places and seen a few things. Anyway, uh, what I would like to ask your advice on is simply this. How on earth do I approach this topic with anyone who isn't capable of rational thought? The kinds of people who immediately call you crazy, label you, and basically stop talking to you altogether. For some reason, the topic of hiding God really struck me since I've been on the fence struggling with religion as well. I enjoyed part 10 and do think that could work, but what if I just wanted to speak with my pastor at church? I can't point to him, in, I po can't point him to your videos, which honestly lay out uh, uh, this all out better than I ever could. Also, does any of this knowledge ever scare you? For me, I wonder if down the road it will keep you keep me from getting a job. In China, they are implementing a system of control where if you speak out against the government, they restrict your ability to travel. Stay safe. Thanks again. Sincerely, uh, James. Yeah, again, if you, you're trying to expose somebody for the first time, I would show them the documentary because it's it shows Flat Earth from both points of view. And the documentary is called Behind the Curve. Uh, not only do they interview a whole bunch of Flat Earthers like Jaron and Bob and myself and um, uh, Nathan Thompson and Patricia Steer and Chris Pontius, uh, but they also interview Scott Kelly and a couple scientists and a psychologist. Very, very interesting. Uh, that's what I would show them first. If you're running into some hard asses because again it doesn't it's it's balanced it's about, it's about as good as word as any this one's called mud flood hey man what are your thoughts on mud flood and false history very fascinating stuff i haven't heard you mention it so i thought i'd ask uh, great show keep up the good work keep it flat shout out to all the usual gang and definitely a shout out to you for keeping the flat earth faith have a great one bill uh no i haven't looked into the mud flood thing too much mostly because i'm flat earth all the time i might get into it eventually but right now, I mean, like after I'm done with this thing, I've got to do two meetups that I've got to promote and uh, then write back somebody on an interview and just keep keep doing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to stay the course as best I can. All right, let's end it on this one. This one's called because it's about as current as it gets. Chinese spacecraft is first to land on the dark side of the moon. That's from the dailymail.co.uk. And you can check it out. And what are my thoughts? Adam from England. Uh, my thoughts are it's just another space story and Chinese haven't done anything on the dark. In fact, I'm really surprised that America hasn't promoted this more because, you know, America, you know, the, our big giant 50th anniversary of the Apollo program is coming up this year. And we, we're not, we're, where's the big celebration? There's a few astronauts still alive and we should be on the moon right now. We should have moon bases and we should have programs going And every president since freaking Reagan has talked about going back to the moon. And they all say the same thing. Uh, Bush and Obama and the other Bush and Bill Clinton and uh, even Donald Trump. Like, oh yeah, we're going to go to the moon. It's like, no, no, we're not. They're, they just tell everybody that every single election. And everyone thinks, oh yeah, we're totally going. Well, we're, why, we're not there. Why not? 
We give NASA $20 billion a year. And I mean, $50 million a day, that's a lot of money. And nothing, we're not doing anything with it. Well, oh, we, we say we're on Mars and we say we've, we've taken computer images of Jupiter and, and we've reclassified Pluto. We haven't done anything. So we're, we're, where's the credibility? It's not there. All right, with that, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, thank you for everyone that emailed me so far. And uh, please send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M S A R G E N T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.